So while everyone is trickling in, we'll start with a few housekeeping rules. We love questions. So go ahead, drop your questions in the lower right-hand corner, and we'll definitely do a Q&A at the end. And make sure you stay to the end because we'll be having a drawing for a one-year free Pitmonic subscription. And you have to stay present for the entire webinar in order to win because I will announce the winner at the end. Just so you know that the webinar will also be recorded and available on YouTube tomorrow. And Pitmonic will also email you a link as well. And then finally, make sure you stay tuned because at the end, I will have a special promotion for those of you who do not unfortunately win the free Pitmonic subscription. We will be offering at the end of today's webinar for the next 24 hours, 30% off. So make sure you stay tuned for that. All righty, so let's go ahead and get into today's program. My name is Janine Sampson. I am a certified pediatric nurse practitioner. I was a pediatric registered nurse for seven years prior to becoming a pediatric nurse practitioner. Um, but now this year I've been a practicing registered nurse for eight years and I've been practicing fully for one year and actually a month. <laughs> one year and one month as a pediatric nurse practitioner. Um, I work at an urgent care, but I also had a few months experience as a primary care pediatric nurse practitioner, which is very, very time demanding and consuming. But right now I'm in the urgent care, which is what I love. Um, how did I discover Pitmonic? Pitmonic was my best friend throughout my last year of school. And that's when you get all of your clinical content, um, when, especially like when you're studying diagnoses that you are um, going to be used or diagnosed in practice. And I loved Pitmonic for that reason because they had a lot of great videos. I discovered it through another nurse um, influencer here or I was about to say here on YouTube, but this will be on YouTube. But here on YouTube is where I discovered Pitmonic by learning how to study for um, nurse practitioner school. And I discovered Pitmonic, which was heaven sent. Um, while I was in school, I used the playlist feature for Pitmonic, which is my absolute favorite thing to use because I could use it on the go, um, especially when I'm driving, my commute to and from clinical, to and from school, to and from work. And all I would do is just find um, the playlist that I created or any playlist that Pitmonic had created for a particular subject. And I would just play all. And ask if you wanna play the educational version or the informational version. And it's, it's very, very easy to use. And I love listening to that on my way to and from pretty much everywhere while I was in school. My life consisted of school, so I use that. And two of my favorite Pitmonics were pediatric milestones, which are very, very important in primary care, and the vaccination schedule, which once again is very, very important when you're a pediatric nurse practitioner and you're practicing in primary care, because that is about 75% of what you see. You have your well visits and then you have your sick visits. And when parents come in for those well visits, they wanna know if their babies are meeting the pediatric milestones and what vaccines they will need at this appointment and if other appointments so that they are prepared. So those are my two favorite and I'm glad that I use those playlists quite often because I get asked those questions every day in practice. All right, but you're here to learn how to pass the C, um, P and P to become a primary care um, pediatric nurse practitioner. I'm always nervous, you guys, so just give me a moment. <laughs> Even though I can't see you, I'm still nervous. <laughs> but um, the main thing is while you're in school, hopefully a lot of you are still in school. You're not here because you're getting ready to study for the exam. And even if you are, I still have some tips for you. But hopefully you're still in school because using these techniques, these skills are gonna get you through school, your last year of school, and also get you through the exam. So my first tip is always learn the material for yourself, not just the exam, because it makes answering the questions in school for testing and for um, the certification exam much easier because you're not studying for a particular time frame. You're studying this for longevity. You're studying this so that you know it. You're studying this so that you can properly take care of other people's children. 
and so that you know exactly what you're doing. It is okay to reference um, resources because all providers, um, you'll be a provider once you're in practice, whether um, well, all hopefully pediatric nurse practitioners, but you'll be referred to as a provider, but all providers, doctors, nurses, PAs, even registered nursing, you don't know everything. So it's good to still use resources, but while you're in school, it's good to learn the information for yourself so that it's easily um, recalled whenever you're taking exams. Another thing that I did while I was in school, especially during my clinical rotations, where I would make a chart of my common diagnoses that I would see, and then I would list the common diagnoses, what diagnostic testing I would use, what are the signs and symptoms they present with, what is teaching that I would like to do for the parent, and also making sure you're listing differential diagnoses. That's gonna be very important in just in any type of healthcare, but very important in pediatrics because uh, um, example is rashes. A lot of rashes ex exam um, mimic each other when you're examining a patient. So if you have in your head the top three, um, in school we did top five diagnoses, but at least in your head, top two or three differential diagnoses so that you know, you're telling, uh, talking to the parent and telling them what they could be potentially seeing. So just make sure you're making that chart of common diagnoses. You see it also come in handy later as well because the PNCB, which is the certification body that I use to get my certification, um, is they pretty much test you about what is seen now in common practice. So if you're in clinical, what you're seeing now could be potentially on the exam. And for me, that was very much so true. Um, my next tip for you is take a review course. Take a review course, start saving now because they're definitely pricey. They could run 350 to $400, unfortunately, but I think it's very beneficial to take a review course such as Fitzgerald, Barclay, or NAFNAP. NAFNAP is what I use, and it's the National Association of Pediatric Nurse Practitioners, and they usually do one um, every year at the national conference, and you can do it live now that we're coming out of this pandemic slowly but surely, or you can get the online version, which is what I use, and I um, studied that for quite some time. I studied that pretty much for like two or three months. Um, the information that I used in the NAP NAP review course. And next after that is answer lots of questions. Um, I use personally Rush Review and Board Vitals. Rush Review was gifted to us by our program and I purchased Board Vitals for myself. Once again, they both are pretty pricey, but I think it's well worth it because a lot of those questions that you'll see on those board certification reviews or on those um, question, in those question banks will be questions that you could potentially see on the boards, just worded potentially in different ways. And what I particularly liked about Rush Review is it gives you an explanation as to why it, um, if it's a diagnosis that's like a visual um, diagnosis, it gives you a picture of what it could be potentially look like and it's very beneficial to use. Um, for me, I did questions every single day. So I took off a month. I was just lucky and able to take off a month prior to my boards. And I literally did questions every day. I studied every day as, as if it was a job. Um, so just making sure you are um, doing those questions every day, testing your knowledge, testing um, your study, have um, what you're studying to make sure you're on track. And this way you also know what it is exactly that you need to focus in your study. So if you're noticing that you're getting a lot of genetic questions wrong, if you're noticing that you are getting a lot of respiratory, cardiac, for me, cardiac is a very weak point. So you notice that you're getting a lot of those questions wrong. You wanna make sure you focus your studying in. It's just another way to make sure you're being successful for boards and making sure you are honing in um, what you're trying to study and what information you're trying to gain. And then right after that is making a realistic study schedule. I base my studying um, based upon the test blueprint. If you go to PNCB's website, they will have a test blueprint, exactly what they're gonna test you on and the percentages of um, how much each category is gonna be on the test. 
and you focus your testing based upon that. Your um, study schedule, I'm sorry. You, um, you're studying based upon that test blueprint. Um, that last week, I, like I said, study based upon the test blueprint. And then once again, those areas that I was very weak in, I um, made sure I reviewed more questions about those subjects. And I also um, made sure I watched my picmonics about those subjects as well. So um, like for cardiac, um, BSDs, ASDs, cortication of the aorta, like those type of things are not very, very easy, but you know, they're pretty hard for me. And so I couldn't remember like um, sometimes ASD, VSD tripped me up and Pygmonic has beautiful um, Pygmonics about those. So I just studied Pygmonic as well as um, my PSCB and as well as the Rush review questions. And when you create this um, study schedule, make sure it's realistic and make sure you stick to it because you don't want to do all this prep and then, you know, just kind of fall short and fail the exam. I had quite a bit of classmates, unfortunately, they did fail the exam, but making sure you are putting those steps into place that way you can become successful is going to be better for you in the long run. All right, so my next one, my next tip is to make sure you're taking adequate study breaks. And you don't want to burn yourself out, basically. You don't want to study, 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 be burnt out, have a lot of fatigue, and kind of just have that foggy haze because you're just doing too much studying. Because after a while, you're not going to retain anything, and everything's going to start to blend together, run together. And it's just very important that you're making sure you're taking adequate study breaks, making sure you're hydrated, and making sure you have a healthy diet as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> My next tip for you is take a mock exam that simulates test day. I took a mock exam, and normally I'm a fast test taker. You get three hours for the um, PNCB's um, Pediatric Nurse Practitioner Certification Exam. And for me, on my mock exam day, it took me the entire three hours to answer 175 questions. So PNCB's exam um, for us as nurse practitioners, pediatric nurse practitioners, um, 175 questions. 150 of them are graded, 25 of them are used as test questions, but you don't know during exam day which questions is which, which questions are which, and you um, get three hours to take the exam. That test day, it took me all three hours to take the exam. I mean, my mock test day took me all three hours to take 175 questions. Now, a test day didn't take me that long. I <laughs> stayed true to myself, which I usually am. I'm a really fast test taker. It only took me one hour to answer 175 questions, which I do not suggest you do. I was just able to read the questions and get through them that way. But I did, like I said, um, take a mock exam to simulate test day. And I think I was just nervous. And the questions that I was using through Ross Review and Board Vitals were very, very difficult questions, but they do prepare, pre prepare you very, very well. So I'm going to leave you guys with um, a few test day tips. I made all of these tips right, you know, that month prior to going into exam day. And I just wanted to make sure I remembered these things for myself. And I feel like they really did help. I mean, I am here. I've been practicing for a year and one month. And I just want to pass them on to you. So my very, very first test day tip, which is very important, is make sure you breathe. Just take a breather. Before you sit down, before you go in there and you're psyching yourself up about what's to happen, just take three big, deep breaths in and out. And then when you're in there and ready to sit down for your test and for your questions, make sure you slow down and read the question, question thoroughly. I say at least read it two or three times to make sure you understand and ask yourself, what is this question asking me? Read it, read it without even looking at the answer choices and answer the question prior to looking at the options. Answer the question prior to looking at the options. Try to guess it because you can look at the options. It's just like the NCLEX. They, they're really not trying to trip you up, but they wanna make sure you know this information. And a lot of those answers are gonna sound like they pertain to that question, 
But if you've already know what the answer is, you're already off to a great start. Um, and also when you're test taking, I always, 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 sometimes like hate that I always second guess myself, never second guess yourself, follow your gut instinct. If that's what you believe the answer to be, just go with your gut, go with your instinct because you are potentially, you're nine times out of 10, you're right. And also another tip is pay attention to key phrases and words. Just make sure you're, you're kind of picking out, well, like I said, what is this question asking me? Pick out those key phrases and those words. And once again, don't second guess yourself. Um, another great tip that I got from another nurse practitioner is take your test during the time of day you are most alert because you wanna make sure you are at your height. You know, each one of us are, especially with us being registered nurses, we could be night owls. A lot of us could be morning people. So if you are a night owl, you wanna make sure you're taking that test a little bit later in the day. But if you're an early riser, a morning person, or for me, I am I kind of in the middle. I'm not really a um, early riser, but I, I'm not really a night owl. I'm right in the middle. But for myself, I was so nervous about taking the exam that I just wanted to schedule it for the first time I could because I was just so nervous. So I ended up taking my exam at eight o'clock that morning. Um, I made sure I rest the night before. I made sure that night before I didn't do any studying. I relaxed that night before. Don't do anything test related. Do something relaxing. Do something to ease your mind so that when you're going into test day, you're nice and you're fresh. And then my last test day tip is to make sure you eat a healthy meal. That is gonna be very important. All right, so those are all the tips that I have for you. Also, if you're looking for this information, the video will be available tomorrow. And I also have a video over on my YouTube channel about um, passing certification exam. And I give you an example of how to use brush review questions is really, really helpful. But making sure you're honing in on those pitmonics that you're having a hard time with. Because for me, I am a visual learner. And that's why pitmonic for me was a lifesaver. Because when I tell you, and I kid you not, even still now, while I'm in practice, a parent is asking me about milestones or they're asking me about vaccines. Once again, those are the two most, more, most important things as pediatric providers. And I see those pigmonics in my head all the time. <laughs> and so um, make sure you're utilizing the um, pigmonics that they have prepared for us. All righty, so now it's time for our Q&A. If you have any questions, just drop them below and I'll be happy to answer them. Another resource I did wanna show you guys that I used while I was studying throughout school, um, as well as um, prior to the exam day is the, Pediatric Nurse Practitioner Certification Review Guide. This here, I still use it now, even so in practice. It's a very good um, book, a very good resource. Once again, it's one of those things where it's giving you the information straight into the point, how you would see it, how it um, diagnose it, signs and symptoms and such. All right, let's see if I have any questions yet. Can I repeat the name of the review book I use? So I hadn't um, um, mentioned a review book. I mentioned a review course which was by the NAPNAP. -NAP. And it, that's the um, Pediatric Nurse Practitioner National Association. And they had a review course in which I used. But the review book that I just mentioned was the Pediatric Nurse Certification, Pediatric Nurse Practitioner Certification book. And this book here is, like I said, a really great book and I still use it now in practice. They have questions at the end of each chapter. And once again, it's based upon the PNCB's test blueprint as well. All 
Oh, and I'll mention those test, um, those question banks were Rosh Review and Board Vitals. They both have apps that you can use to download to your phone, or you can use the online version. For Rosh Review, you can select what categories you want to be tested on. You can select how many questions you want to be tested on. You can um, select whether you want it timed or not timed. Um, like I said, I pretty much answer questions for 30 days prior to my exam um, every single day. Like my mom wants me to take a study break. She took me to Philly for a day and I was still answering questions on the road. We would be out to dinner. I would be answering questions or looking at pick money. I would just utilize each uh, moment that I had to study, but while also making sure I took study breaks. <clears throat> All righty, just as a reminder, a recording will be available tomorrow on YouTube, this recording here, and Picmonic will email you the link. The winner for the one-year Picmonic Premium subscription, subscription is going to be Jordana, um, I hope I'm not saying your last name right, but Jordana Augustine. You're the Picmonic winner. How exciting. I hope you love it as much as I love it because I still use it, like I said, to reference some of those um, that some of those diagnoses that I still see in practice just to make sure I'm still practicing the way that I should be and knowing exactly what I'm prescribing or what I should, how I'll be treating, how I should be treating a patient. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember that you're going to receive those of you who didn't receive the one year subscription for free will get 30% off. It's usually 20% off, but for the next 24 hours, we are gonna give you 30% off when you subscribe to Pitmonic in the next 24 hours. And there are two ways that you'll be able to get to this. You can click the link right in the chat right now, or you can wait an hour to receive the email with the link directly to the discounted pricing. Thank you guys for attending and I hope you have a great day.